Welcome back to Science News Thursdays, the weekly show that keeps you informed while entertaining you with dank memes. Join us. Join us. Today, we're talking about NASA's plans for the ISS, a deadly bacteria that might be targeting your children, male elephant seals, rogue black holes, and the controversial science of the first Americans. So let's go ahead and jump right into the science news and the memes. Come, let us gingerly touch our tips. I'm Eric Malachite, author of the Seleniar's Enigma series, and this is Science Get. Yeah, you read that headline right. NASA is planning to crash the International Space Station into the Pacific Ocean. Uh, why? While the ISS will continue to be used for groundbreaking scientific research in microgravity, its shelf life is coming due. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 It might surprise some younger viewers that the ISS is a relatively young amalgamation of components from various countries, with the first piece having launched from Russia in 1998. Since then, the station has been expanded with multiple modules. The ISS actually wasn't fully complete until 2011, and currently it features two bathrooms, which use a suction system powered by fans very similar to the space shuttles, five bedrooms, a gym to keep those muscles from atrophying, and some massive solar arrays to catch rays and power all that equipment. Once the ISS finally reaches the end of its service life, NASA reports that it will engage its thrusters, performing maneuvers that will allow it to safely enter our atmosphere. When it finally comes down, it'll hit a point in the ocean known to some as the Spacecraft Cemetery, which sounds really badass. This location rests 2,000 miles, 3,218 kilometers north of Antarctica, and 3,000 miles, 4,828 kilometers from the east coast of New Zealand. And I'm certain that it'll make a huge fireball considering the thing's the size of a football field. Here's hoping that A, this channel is still going. Join us. Join us. B, that I have help. Join us. And C, that someone gets video of that thing crashing. Over the last 20 years, the space station has allowed humanity to maintain a presence in low Earth orbit. Since the launch of that first Russian module, it has served as an excellent vehicle for scientific experiments in microgravity, giving us a greater understanding of the effects that space and low gravity have on the human body. I even reported on a groundbreaking biomining experiment last year that it was performed on the ISS. This same technology may be used on Mars in the future for the production of breathable air. NASA assures us, however, that the space station has just entered its third and most productive decade yet, and still has nine years left in its service life. So get cracking, Mr. Scientist! The remains of a six-year-old boy from 550 CE could grant scientists a unique look at how pandemics begin and end. Haemophilus influenzae B may sound like a flu virus, but it's actually a bacterium, which is funny because it doesn't even cause flu symptoms. The boy's remains, specifically a tooth, are the oldest known evidence of a bacterial infection of what's known as the Hib. H-I-B, not V, and this is the reason why I'll be calling it the Hib from here on out. Humans are H. influenzae's only known host, but it's suspected that the bacterium is far older than 1400 years. The boy contracted the Hib around the same time that the plague was beginning to ravage the known world. The plague of Justinian took place from the years 541 to 549 CE, and is regarded as the first plague pandemic involving Yersinia pestis, otherwise known as, you know, the plague. He says he's not dead. Yes. Although the Hib has pretty much been eradicated thanks to vaccines, don't tell the Karens of the world that, and doesn't lead to flu symptoms and host to the bacterium, it can lead to meningitis pneumonia, and if it is allowed to escape the respiratory system, it can infect joints, fusing them together. That is exactly what happened to that six-year-old boy in 550 CE, which is a process that would have taken weeks to happen. On top of that, the boy caught the plague as well, though scientists suspect he had the Hib first. However, the plague is suspected to be the cause of the ancient boy's death, which would make him the most unlucky child from that era. Check the article in the description for more details.
A great mystery is beginning to form around male elephant seals. In order to compete for the attention of females of their species, male elephant seals are driven to eat as much as they possibly can. The goal, other than inspiring the next major league eating champion, is to become as big as a dump truck, if not larger. To put this in perspective, males can grow anywhere from three to seven times as large as a typical female does. And females are typically 10 feet long and weigh up to 1,300 pounds. Not surprisingly though, that comes with some risks, and male elephant seals are six times more likely to die while sucking up food like an animalistic vacuum cleaner from the continental shelf than their female counterparts. The real question is why males are so much more likely to die. Scientists are currently looking for answers, but it's possible that the need to feed in males causes them to explore more dangerous territories, where unspeakable horrors dwell. I couldn't resist. Check the full article for more details. Who originally settled North and South America? Was it Siberian and East Asian settlers crossing the Bering Land Bridge? No, not until much later at least. The actual ancient history of the Americas when it comes to its original human occupants is tumultuous, to say the least, and a battleground for conflicting theories and interests. It should also be no surprise that there is quite a bit of mistrust of scientists conducting genetic research of Native Americans. It's an inconvenient fact that the ancestors of those of us who came over from across the pond robbed them of their land, infected them with new diseases like scarlet fever, typhus, smallpox, measles, influenza, diphtheria, cholera, and f bubonic plague to name a few. But it's important to those working in the field now to develop an accurate history of human occupation here in the Americas. In comes Jennifer Raff, an anthropologist and geneticist who wants to fix that particular problem. Raff's penned a book called Origin, A Genetic History of the Americas, which hopes to create the most accurate representation of America's genetic lineage. She's accomplishing this feat by integrating research on modern DNA with ancient DNA and comparing them to archaeological evidence. When it comes to the origins of humanity's presence here in the Americas, there are a few conflicting views. Some contend that people showed up some 130,000 years ago in Southern California, where yours truly is from. Others think that people showed up here somewhere around 30,000 years ago, give or take. Raff believes that there is a third option, however, suggesting that the evidence tells a very different tale. The first people could have popped up in the Americas anywhere from 18,000 to 20,000 years ago. Check the full article for additional details. Right now, black holes, cows, are in their heyday. Not only have we imaged the M87 supermassive black hole, cow, but it's become a regular occurrence for scientists to measure the telltale gravitational waves that cascade through the known universe when two stellar mass black holes, cows, decide to get intimate and merge. If you're wondering why I keep calling black holes cows, check Science News Thursdays 1 through 3 for details. Wandering black holes have long been thought to roam our galaxy. <laughs> But until now, we've never found one. That's right, kids. Scientists have come out and made the lofty claim that they've discovered the first wandering, free-floating, one is the loneliest number black hole. And shock and surprise, it's only 5,000 light years from the Earth. Everyone, quick, start panicking. Don't worry, 5,000 light years is still too far away for this particular black hole to have much of an effect on the solar system. The new paper showed up on January 31st, but is yet to be peer reviewed. So, you know, take everything I just said with a grain of salt. Still, Marina Reykjaba from the European Southern Observatory in Germany and co-author to the accompanying paper, which again, has not been peer reviewed, told Scientific American, it's super exciting. We can actually prove that isolated black holes are there. If peer review vindicates these lofty claims, then this will be a huge deal. And maybe, just maybe, we'll then be able to answer a question that has been on my mind for years now. Whether or not Planet Nine is really a primordial black hole at the distant reaches of the solar system. Let's get on that, please, Mr. Scientist. Check out the full article for all the details as well as a lengthy history lesson on black holes. That's all I've got for you this week, but come back next week, same cow time, same cow channel for more science cow news and more cow memes. And hey, if you love black holes, check out the second video in a series on black holes. Hint. Wandering black holes are terrifying. Wow. Check out all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time, Space Cow.
All hail the great cosmic bovine.